less, more or less, they cut out just a little bit. They cut up? Well, you started cutting out for a second. People was saying a real cut up. More like a. More like I, a what? I got nothing. You got, got nothing. something. I, I, I don't have anything. I'm working so much. I like that's all I know anymore. It's just working. Hey, same here, man. You got to make time for the for just some enjoyment in your life, pal. Can't let work <laughs> take you over. I don't enjoy this. What are you talking about? Just yeah, you kidding. do. You called me in your sleep the other night, and you were like, "Oh, naked metal," and I'm like, "What? Okay, whatever." Are you are you are you, are you recording? I I, I, I am r, 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 recording. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's <laughs> are you recording the new show? So Mr. Humphrey, you know, is are you recording? I'm recording. What's weird is like in <laughs> I'm looking at my <laughs> I'm looking at my Skype uh, screen. And it says connecting, like it's not connected yet. It's just saying connecting, and it hasn't. We changed have this like problem every minutes. time. Every time we record lately, we have this problem where I'm talking and talking, and then you're just gone. And I'm like, well, he's gone again. And you're like, oh, yeah, they stuck my computer over. And and that used to be because you'd be in like minefields or like abandoned like meat slaughterhouses and all these weird locations, haunted houses and sanitariums but now that you're at home every night it works even worse can you explain that mark yeah i didn't think so well are you gone <laughs> nah, i just kidding dude. <laughs> either way it was funny uh mentally challenged jr3 to the master butcher and mark is he there and is he or is he not ai generated hansen on the phone fuck yeah mark take it away i got five rockers in a row um what's your top five songs right now man top five songs anything metal rock okay um there's a band swing called out to sister i like to swing out sister so there's a band called toe hider Toe hider? Mm -hmm. T-O-E-H-I-D-E-R. Orthopedic metal? Uh -huh. And my the song is called I Kill Me. And they're like, um, <clears throat> so like uh, recently I went on kind of like a prog metal deep dive and was really disappointed, like, like I seems like all the bands are sounding the same these days and it was you probably always say. yeah it's probably <laughs> always like that you know yeah it was always like that sorry to break it to you pal every once in a while like a band will just sort of pop out that's like really fresh and toe hider is i don't know if it's less of a band or like a one-man project it's like this multi-instrumentalist and he actually kind of pisses me off like he's so good at guitar and he's also like an amazing drummer, keyboard player, and vocalist, bass player. So it's almost like he's rubbing my face and like how good he is. It's like, oh, I'm just like a genius at everything, you know? And it, his music to me is like hit and miss because he's... Is it a one-man thing or is it just one guy? I think guy so. I think, it's like, I think it's like a one-man project. <laughs> he might have like, uh, you know, session player, you know, like maybe guest musicians on it. But like, there's there's these every once in a while there's these crop of like musicians that are like so like good like and knowledgeable in music that they become almost like experts in every genre, and that's where it becomes hit and miss for me. Is like so this guy like when he hits this sort of sweet spot of metal, progressive, and pop, it's like some of the most perfect music ever. But he's also like so musically gifted that he has to like master like polka music or something, you know. So the next song will be like some kind of medieval folk. So yeah, I would be into that. Medieval music is always cool. I love or, that. Or, or it would be like kind of like a. Who is this guy again? 
the band is called Toe Hider. T -O what's the guy you're talking about? Um, let, me, let me find his name. Who is this individual? His name is uh, da, 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 Toe Hider. Fucking shit. <laughs> uh, wow. Sorry. What was that? It was like kind of like a hiccup kind of thing. Your uh, alien uh, implanted embryo is shifting. So it's like two guys. So let's see, Toe Hider, rock group from Melbourne. So they're Australian. And they're probably pretty boys, like the two guys on the Supernatural, right? You just want to punch them? No, I mean, he's kind of a normal looking <laughs> dude. I mean, some of the pictures he looks like. So who know. are they? What's their names? Uh, let me find it. Hold on. Let me just, I've got to find their like wiki or something because. Uh, Toe Hider Wikipedia. Okay. Founded by, okay, so the, the guy is Michael Mills, is his name. And he, they, you know, it's another thing, they're like so musically genius that they, they're extremely prolific. So they have like 12 EPs out um, since uh, 2008. Oh, they could pull off as an EP, then they're not that prolific. 12. Still. Okay, wait, okay, so listen. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So five full length albums and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, Where are they from? 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 EPs, uh, one, two, three, four, six singles, and they're on three compilations. They're from Melbourne, Australia. And let me pull up the personnel. As you know, in Texas, there was a kid named Michael Mills that I didn't like very much, but I borrowed his. Uh... Remember how we were talking about Atari games a while ago? Yeah. No, but yeah. yeah we were talking about like Adventure, the castle game and all of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, this kid, Michael Mills, I kind of, he was kind of a little brat. You know, his mom was a teacher in the schools and um i borrowed his adventure game and i got so mad one time that i ripped it out of the atari and like smashed it against the wall and it broke so i was like oh shit so i had to go to sears and like uh yeah this broke and then replace it anyways uh -huh. so anyway they're from australia yeah and it's pretty much that michael mills guy is like the the dude that composes everything um now, here's a funny note, too, as we were talking, I mentioned Atari, the show I just posted, we we're talking about video games, but also we talked about the Beatles, and I kind of went off on a, a tangent the same way, that Paul McCartney was the guy who did a lot of the work in the Beatles, but it was listed under Lennon McCartney as the main songwriters, mm -hmm. and I'm like, nah, I don't buy that. Like, I hear John Lennon stuff, and I was just like, he doesn't have that caliber in his solo stuff and like in most of the Beatles stuff the stuff you know he did it wasn't the same caliber so I kind of shit on John Lennon a little bit last time so I just want to say I'm not like taking anything away from him mm -hmm. but uh you know he's he was a great musician and a great poet and all of that and he was a good person but uh Paul was a little bit more gifted I think so instant karma is not gonna get me yeah um but anyway, yeah, I know what you mean. There's a wonder child in there. And think about Peter from Hypocrisy. Vinny, he so here's here's something like, that. okay, there's a bit of a, well, I don't know, is this a Kiss connection? Um, on one of the uh, EPs, the drums were recorded by by Vinny Apice. Vinny Apice, yes. Um, he played drums in Did he play drums in a Kiss lot or... of bands, like Ozzy, Black Sabbath, Dio. Or was that Carmen? There's two... Uh, Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, you're right. Carmine Apis, he's the drummer. Vinny was the drummer of Dio. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. Yeah, Carmine was in a bunch of bands, and he was in King Cobra. That was his band, and then he did a bunch of, like, Kiss fill-in stuff. But Vinny Apis, was the drummer of Dio, and I'm sure he was in a I, bunch of other bands, too. Well, ironically, the first thing that comes up on his discography is he played on John Lennon's Walls and Bridges. <laughs> Just hand claps. <laughs> Uncredited. Hand claps? Yeah, 1974. Wow, that's was his first session, that's I think. Crazy. Yeah. That's funny, though, hand class, but 1974, that's, like, interesting that that's actually noted down for reference. Yeah, this guy's on a bunch of shit, man. Wow. Who, Vinny um, or Michael Mills? Vinny. 
Michael yeah, Mills that's why I said all those guys back then, like Rudy Sarzo, like Vinny Apice, Carmine Apice, Bob Kulik, all those guys were like everywhere. You just, mm-hmm. We were talking about that last time, like Steve Vai um, and Graham Bonnet. Like for some reason, I can't remember. I wanted to mention Graham Bonnet a couple of shows ago, but I didn't. But he was one of those guys that's always in everything, you know, and he, he never really does his own thing. But he does, but it doesn't get noticed. You know what I mean? Well, he, he, I mean, he does his own thing, but I, I think a better example would be like Jeff Scott Soto. Yeah, same thing, exactly. And I only know Joel him the singer of Ingve Malmsteen. Yeah, yeah, Joe Lynn Turner. I guess another one would be like yeah, Joe Lynn Turner, of course. Um, Axel Rudy Pell, but, but I think he's a guitar player. I don't know. Yeah, if your name's Axel, Riddles. then you're probably a guitarist. Yeah, or. Or you're a part of a car. That too. So, uh, yeah. So, so Toe Hiders, so that's, huh? that's one. That's one of the top ones that I'm listening to. Uh, another one I kind of went on a deep dive was um, Firebrand. Or no, not Firebrand. Freebird? Free... What is it? Firebird. Bill Steer's Firebird. band. Bill Steer? That's really good stuff, actually. I, and I'm not really a fan of, like, kind of, you know, Southern rock stuff. But you can actually still hear, like, I think the fact that he, his main thing was Carcass for so long, made the riffs, you know, if you translate, like, kind of the the skills that you had to, you know, acquire to play death metal to, like, when you kind of, apply that to like sort of earthy like blues based rock it i think it actually helps the music like it makes his riffs a little more creative i think but it's good stuff it was groovy it's like really groovy and soulful and kind of reminds me of like uh was it like like cream because i've heard it compared to cream quite a bit like a heavy cream um almost i it kind of reminds me of uh I don't know if you're ever familiar with J.K. Lee's soul, like band after Ozzy, Badlands. I've heard of it, yeah. So Bill Steer had a heavy cream and J.K. Lee was a little bit of sugar added in or what? Yeah, I mean, Jake, well, I don't know. A perfect um, mixture? I th- I'd say J.K. Lee's <laughs> still is, is a little, almost a little heavier than the Firebird stuff. Oh, yeah. Maybe a little more edgy. Firebird, when Bill did that, that was when Carcass broke up. They did Swan Song and they kind of had a sour taste in their mouth from by being on Earache. Because Earache wasn't ready for all the popularity they got so quickly, especially the major label deal with Columbia. And that was Swan Song aptly named was to get out of their contract. So I think Bill just wanted to go off and do something like kind of a whatever the fuck kind of thing. Kind of like Tom Warrior when he did Cold Lake. Same thing. It was like, I'm going to get this stress and anxiety out of my system and go do something just fun yeah yeah so i mean but it's like um it doesn't sound what's interesting is it doesn't sound like a kind of a project i mean they do have like four or five albums but it sounds like a very cohesive band i mean it sounds like they've been playing for is this firebird you're talking about yeah yeah and it sounds like straight from the 70s like it just yeah totally all in it but it sounds like super cohesive like not like not a throwaway kind of band i mean the well, yeah, it was, no, was that was a real band it. for him that yeah. was the thing that was their thing and then and he's yeah. a singer and he's a great singer like really just freaking i mean just nails everything about no, like he did vocals i didn't well i mean i guess that's not a surprise he had vocals and carcass but they were the deep growls but yeah and even then it had a pitch shifter on it but yeah um I don't know. That's kind of interesting. I mean, Black Star Rising was the other band Carcass broke off into. That was Jeff and the drummer Ken Owen for a minute. They It was kind of like a, I'm not sure what it was, like just like a metal, almost like, not grunge quite, but like a modern, like 90s kind of rock metal band okay. at that time. Have you heard that one? No, no, I'll just check that one out. But it was yeah, but like Bill Steer, it was, he was, he's, it was that, it's like for that kind of music, it's probably some of the, like, very listenable, you know. You even said when we saw Carcass Live, you even said that Bill Steer just looks like he's this throwback from the 70s. I mean, he, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's of our age, so I oh, mean, yeah. technically, he was born in the 70s, I'm sure, so or at least grew up in the 70s anyway. 
he looks like i mean he has he looks like he could be in the almond brothers you know and, and maybe that's also how i describe it kind of like a heavy almond brothers yeah. It has a little bit of a southern rock feel, but a little more soulful. So there's some funk and stuff. It's really good <clears throat> for that style. I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's not my thing totally, but like, I was grooving on it. I went, I listened to all the albums, and it was. Yeah, I might have to listen to that. I have never actually heard Firebird, but it's funny you you said that because I have really, really been into classic rock lately. Oh, um, you, you probably, and and it's funny because I mean, that sort of. I mean, I don't know if I'd call it classic rock, but like there is something about like when you just don't know what like you don't really nothing new is really hitting you, you know, and you kind of just go back to like these old reliables, you know, like you. Well, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I love that because I grew like up Kiss on and Steely that. Dan or so like that, you know, you not even that, out. not even that. That's my usual go to anyway. But here's the thing is I told you a while ago, there was an app you can get if you have like Roku or something. Or even on your phone, I guess. But there's an app called Excite Videos, X I T E. You can watch anything. You can watch it. Of, of course, it defaults to R and B horseshit. So I'm like, no fucking thank you, fuck offs. But there's a classic rock channel, and you can see it, it has the Doors and Hendrix and all of that. Well, I always skip that. I'm not into the '60s so much, but I go to the '70s, and I've been watching videos by like Toto, Kansas, Foreigner. Star, uh, Jefferson Starship, Fleetwood Mac. I'm like, I cannot fucking get enough of it. I'm like, God damn. And you watch them play live, and oh, you're amazing. like, uh, yeah. I'm like, they they had like three or four guitarists, and one of them had a double neck guitar and a bass player. And whoever wasn't doing something, like the singer, when there was no singing, he would be playing a bongo drum or a tambourine. Tambourine, yeah. Anything. I'm like, what the fuck? These guys really, and you don't really think about it. Or like Boston, you know, you hear Boston, and you don't really think. That there's all that going on but when you watch it you're like look at what they're doing there's so much to this song and they just look like they're having a good time it was just so much more free yeah, and funny. relaxed and like i love that i love boston and kansas and i'm really in the like toto yes. right right now like i'm fucking toto really? i mean they look like your dad in a band you know it's like a kind of a chubby guy with a brown button down shirt and corduroy pants with a mustache mm -hmm. you're like what the fuck who are these guys but they're like dude, playing man. hard rock i'm like it's so steve good steve lukather man is like dude, he's one of the greatest guitar players ever man yeah and that's funny because you on the show i posted just recently you were mentioning steve lukather was the guitarist and most of michael jackson's uh beat Toto, album. like the band Toto was yeah, Pretty and that was right around the time of... they had their own big album come out, that Toto 4, the one with Africa and Rosanna and all those songs on it. And then they went right into doing Dune, the music for Dune, right after that, I think, didn't they? Yeah, like 85. Right around that time, yeah. So, yeah, I've been, like, way in the classic rock. Like, I'm just, like, I'm just marveling at the shit they did. And I was like, you don't hear it so much in the music, but you watch them live, and they're, like, you know, like, carry on wayward son live i'm like fuck man they really did a lot of shit i love that man there's the one guy that wears the white tuxedo the other dude with the long hair that plays the 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 wow. fiddle or whatever i'm like this is so good like how can people diss this music it's the fucking best it's so creative it's a lot of work put into it it's so much better than any of the shit we have today except for i haven't heard today's rock bands quote unquote looks like they're trying to bring that back but maybe not like in that aspect i guess but well, um, interestingly enough, um, so speaking of like Toto, Steve Lukather's son, his name is, what is his name? Trev. Trev Lukather. You know, of course, he's a guitar player and he's put a band called, and they're, they just released a couple of singles. The band is called The Effect. And it's Trev, uh, Steve Lukather's son on guitar phil collins son on drums and i can't remember if there was like another kind of legacy sort of uh player on it but it's excellent it sounds like it kind of sounds like a a fresh take on genesis and toto sort of that 80s kind of vibe that that's really good too i would actually throw that up there as one of the things that it was impressing me lately now, you know what's funny about that is the reason i think the reason why i like judas priest so much better than iron maiden and i think that when judas priest goes for the jugular with like we're a metal band ripping metal 
Like, I think that's really not their forte. I think at heart, uh-huh. they're a rock band because they were around oh, at yeah. that time in the 70s. And that's really what they play was just hard rock. And that's, that's their <laughs> stuff I like the best. Like, not that's why I don't like British Steel because it's like polished and poppy, you know. But I, their other shit, like, I mean, there's some heavier stuff. Like, Staying Class is heavier, but it's still mm-hmm. kind of rock, you know. And, like, some of their songs, like that older stuff and, like, even oh, Point yeah. of Entry you know, to a degree, but... Like even even like screaming for vengeance, like a song like um, "Devil's Child," right? Yeah. I mean, that could be an ACDC riff almost. You know. Um. And that's another one is ACDC. They show this live video of ACDC playing "Let There Be Rock." Live. Mm-hmm. I was like, "What the fuck? Look at that!" Like Angus Young was going out of his mind, just like he was just dripping oh, yeah. sweat. And he was just playing that riff. I'm like, this is almost just like nonstop. I'm like, what the fuck, yeah. man? I didn't think ACDC could be like this. And they were just, it went on and on for like 15 minutes. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. That's oh crazy, yeah. Man. Dude, he just goes and he does not. You stop. sell ACDC short because you know all their shits like do 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 do. It's like just yeah, but dude, they're pedantic rock and such a groove. Like, and and they have they they have a feel that's like really hard. Like, people can play their songs. But to get the feel that they have is really difficult because it's like, you know, once again, it's it's like this nuance that you either have it or you don't, you know. Van Halen's another one. Like, you watch this old Van Halen um, with Roth. Dude, to this day, nobody touches, like, that band live. You watch some of those live videos, and you're like, holy crap. Yeah, David Lee Roth just doing those high mid-air splits and stuff and just the screams and the the crowd stuff and just the, the whole swagger thing live yeah it's and it, like another one that's funny to me is Fleetwood Mac because I was like it's funny because uh I almost get the impression even watching live Fleetwood Mac videos from the 70s that there was some unrest within the band that they didn't like Stevie Nicks or something or like wasn't there some controversy like that or I, I think that whole band was like hated each other. Yeah, that's what I you heard. Know? Like, like Christine McVie, I didn't know she was married to another guy in the band, but apparently he was a fucking crazy drunk alcoholic, and I didn't know she died either. And that's when the band just called it quits. But like, I they're like part British and part American, right? Isn't that how it was? I don't, dude. I'm not a uh, fucking Fleetwood Mac historian. I don't, I don't know. I was, I was never really into them, but I mean, they're, they're definitely like. Well, I mean, I know their hit singles. They're, they're and kind stuff, of up but... there. They're like there with the Eagles, where they just kind of write these perfect songs. Yeah, they are. They are like that. That's funny. That's a good comparison. But they had a few albums out, like already. They had a, quite a few albums out. They kind of never really made it big. But when they had Stevie Nicks and I think someone else joined the band, and suddenly it just exploded. Like that's when they got all those songs, like "Don't Stop" and um, the other one, uh, "Here You Go Again." Like. You know, that one. I can't remember. I don't know. Uh, anyway, you know, it's like, thunder always happens when it's raining. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember the name of it. But anyway, song, yeah. yeah. And like Toto and like, uh, and Kansas. Like Kansas, Dust in the Wind. It's such an overplayed song. But when you see him playing it, it's like, God damn, man, this is so good. That could be a doom metal song. It's. <laughs> I'm like Kansas was really fucking Kansas good. Got, like, huh? Yeah, they they can get heavy and and pretty dark, you know. Like their Monolith album, it's kind of overlooked, but it's like it's crazy good. It's and but it's almost like Sabbathy heavy, I think. See, all these bands, they always come live. I would never go. I'm I'm starting to regret that. I'm like, man, I should go see these bands coming live. Like Heart and Cheap Trick are coming here, and it's right down the street from my house in September. I'm kind of thinking of going. Oh, they playing the Maverick. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cheap Trick yeah, like, would be cool. They're, they're another. See, I was never a like big really... Cheap Trick guy. I don't know much of their stuff. Like I know like uh, Dream Police and I Want You to Want Me and Surrender. That's about it. And like they had a song in the '80s called "She's Tight" that was kind of heavy. It was kind of like a mm-hmm. like an overlooked song. She's but... tight. Da, 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 yeah, it was like a really da, heavy like she's honky tight. sex song. Yeah. But it never really quite made it. It was around that time that New Wave was coming out and getting popular here. And, like, rock was going by the wayside because it was the same thing with Queen. They had 
uh, Body Language or whatever that single was. That album came out and it was kind of overlooked too. But and it showed Queen videos. I'm not big into Queen. I think Queen's a little overrated, but I know they're good and everything. But but yeah, I've just been like uh, it's like classic rock stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, I I can dig it. Um, and and there is actually uh, I don't, I don't know if I like a. I don't know if I'd call them classic rock, but it's like another band that I like a couple of bands I like stumbled on that were like turned out to be really good. Um, so do you remember the movie uh, Heavy Metal cartoon? Yeah. So that opening sequence, you know, where the it's like that convertible is dropping out of a spaceship and entering Earth's atmosphere. Did you ever see the movie? I saw it once. I rented it like with one of my friends. This was like 85 or something. So I totally don't remember. I remember maybe like something about a like a little device that floated into a spaceship that was like a voice, like a robot. My, I don't know. I, I totally don't remember it. Yeah. Well, anyways, like I got on the soundtrack, the opening band is called um, uh, Rigs. And I just kind of, they only put out one album. Yeah, Cheap think, Trick is actually on that soundtrack, too. Steely Dan's on it. Yeah, that's right. They were. And Devo. Devo. Fucking Devo. Devo, Devo hated being on there. They were so pissed about that because the label just threw them on there. But they were like, what the fuck are we doing on here with all these bands? And Yeah. But anyway, what what about it? So I, I, I just thought, I'd, you know, like I wanted to see that open sequence again because I haven't seen the movie in like decades, you know. So, But it, I don't. I remember not really like in the movie like it was just kind of eh, so so yeah i didn't think it was that great either the magazines are better <laughs> but i just remember the i just remember that opening sequence and, and loving the song on it and so i looked it up and just looked at the band and they put out one album and that was it and the song on on heavy metal is not even on the album but the album's really good once again it's kind of in that kansas vein like kansas night ranger sort of uh vibe so a little bit poppy, but crunchy and heavy. And it's like, hell yeah, man. So yeah, I'm kind of in the same, a little bit of the same sort of mindset as you right now. So um, there was a second, there was a sequel to that movie. Yeah. Had, like Pantera and stuff on it, didn't it? I, you know, I think it was like, it was Heavy Metal 2000. So dude, and, and I, I didn't even think to look at it because Think about the music that was being released in 2000, the year 2000. Yeah, it was think, like new uh, metal, dude. It was like garbage. So let's see. I think that album, Heavy Metal, one of my, like, I again, uh, the last show, one of the last shows I put up, I had a friend that was totally into, like, all this obscure stuff. So I borrow stuff from him all the time and he had the heavy metal soundtrack. And I remember Cheap Trick song is pretty good. I, I like Devo, you know, although I thought they stuck out on that like a sore thumb. And there were like one or two other songs, like I think Nazareth was okay on there. But other than that, I don't remember much of it. And then Don Felder, I'm like, who the fuck's Don Felder? I guess yeah. he was in the Eagles, right? I think that's Don Henley. I don't know who well, Don apparently is. Don Felder was also a guy like in way back in the early incarnation of the Eagles. I'm I'm guessing if I remember correctly. Let's so what check. was that band called? Riggs. Riggs. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at the tra yeah Radar Rider. I remember that Radar. song. Yeah. And then uh, Blue Oyster Cult, Veteran of the Psychic Wars. That's a good song. Um, who else? Donald Fagan. Got the news. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I know, that's, fucking vague speaking of, they, band, they, can't get more pussyish than that. Well, I mean, they they uh they're even more of an oddball than Devo on that soundtrack. Yeah, really. Me. Silly Dan's not rock at all, but Donald Fagan his solo shit's so like New York Jewish. I'm like, come on, man, what? That's not even oh, rock. Yeah. But I uh, uh, Riggs has two songs on here: Heartbeat and Radar Rider. Stevie Nicks, Speak of the Devil, she was on there. I forgot about that. Journey, I. Can't remember them being on there. The Cheap Trick song, Don Felder, Take a Ride. Sammy Hagar. Grand Funk Railroad. Cheap Trick again. Sammy Hagar was on that? I think, yeah, I think the song Heavy Metal. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was. Okay. Uh, was that made for that? Was that what he did that for? Or was that just a song he already did? Uh, good question. No, I, I think it's a song he already did. I think it might even be off their 
off his VOA album? I don't know. Now, here's a weird thing is underneath Sammy Hagar's heavy metal song, it says E5150. It's uncredited on the album, but it's Ronnie James Dio, Geezer Butler, Tony Iommi, i.e. Black Sabbath, who also are on the song as Black Sabbath or on the album as Black Sabbath with Mob Rules. Oh, yeah. It says Devo's on there again. I don't remember that. Through Being Cool. That's weird. Working in the Coal Mine by Devo. And then I guess there might have been some like symphonic thing like, according to this. But yeah, it's a weird album. I haven't heard that one or seen the movie since 1985. So that's crazy. I remember a majority of the bands on there weren't really heavy metal. And when that movie came out, when did that come out? It was like 1980. It was like 82 or something like that. Or heavy 83. metal wasn't really a thing yet. It was in Europe in the underground, but here in America, people were like just getting into fucking new wave and shit. Like, come on, Eileen, and that kind of shit. Yeah. Jenny, I got your number. So, yeah, that's funny. That's That's really weird. I think I have that soundtrack somewhere downloaded at least or copied, but maybe I don't. I don't know. 1981. Yeah, that's that's when I was uh, a school kid, junior high. <laughs> but yeah, it was. I'm really. I think the best bands I'm really into the most right now, out of those older ones, is is Boston, um, Kansas, and Toto, and and Jefferson Starship was really good too. Surprisingly, because they turned into pussies later. Just as uh, Starship we built this city. Yeah, yeah. See, that's bullshit. Fuck that. They did. There's a song called Jane that's really heavy from like 1980 or 81. There's another album or another song called uh, Don't Look Back, I think, or Find Your Way Back. Find Your Way Back. Find Your Way Back to your heart. It's just a great heavy song. And I never realized how heavy it was. I was like, man, all of that shit is like really heavy if you pay attention to the riffing and shit. I'm like, what the fuck, man? And they're doing like yeah. double bass and shit. I'm like, wow. Like, I never, never paid attention to that on the radio. You just don't hear it. But I mean, yeah, that stuff is really good. And here's another one. Like, I mean, just speaking of like, you know, you know how you're just kind of like going about your day and then just like something random, like just some random memory pops in your head of like a song and you go put, look it up and either it holds up or it doesn't. Um, that also happened recently with, um, I don't know why. What got me, what triggered the memory, but I remember just like kind of just going about my day and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm like, you know, um, wow, how does it, I can't even think of it. Da, 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 walls of heartache, bang, bang, I am the world. That's Scandal, Eddie Smythe and Scandal. Eddie Smythe. And I was so like, I wonder if that song is as good as I remember it and pulled it up and it's awesome. Like, Hell yeah. It was a great song. Well, we yeah. said this before. When you go back and listen to music, like, again, with Kiss Asylum is always my main go-to with this, is uh, you think stuff's pussy-ish, but you go back and listen to it, and they were really tuned down on Kiss Asylum. You're like, wow. they. I thought it was bullshit when I heard it as a kid because I was wanting heavy, heavy metal. Yeah. And Asylum, Tears Are Falling, just didn't do it. But if you listen to it, it's actually like, jun, 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 jun. Oh, yeah. It's just Paul's lyrics kind of took over because Gene wasn't really there, you know. <clears throat> but all that stuff, like, you know, like Jefferson Starship, that's what I'm saying. They had, like, these hard guitar chops. There were, like, three guitarists. One dude, puts he plays this riff with the other guitarist, throws his guitar behind his back and goes right to the piano and starts playing it. And yeah. then he, like, stops and grabs his guitar again. And I'm like, wow, like, what the fuck, man? These These guys worked hard back then. It doesn't seem like it's that way now. No, it, it. I don't think it is either. You know, another band that's heard, kind of. Have you heard any of these newer rock bands like uh, uh, Massive you know. Wagons or Blackberry Smoke or like what's that other one that everybody's into? Like the. Oh, the fucking. This the chick's name Zelda Lukather or what? What the fuck's that band? What? <laughs> oh, oh. Hell. What the, it's a it's a chick's name. It's like. Uh, yeah, but but the Stella band is... Stella something or. No, the and the band is like they're kind of like a very Zeppelin. Like, yeah, almost. yeah, yeah, exactly. Who who is that? It's it's a girl's <laughs> name. Dude, I can't even think about it. Um, it's like Stella Lukather. It's the name of the band or something <laughs> like that. <It's> not Stella <laughs> Lukather. 
<laughs> but let's call you know let's call mean. him Stella Luca Three. Stella Artois. I don't know what it's a fucking yeah. chick's name. It's the band. Um, uh, it's I can't fucking think of it. It's on the tip of my got a tongue. Z in it and a V. I think. Vazugaraga. I don't know. I don't. Um, does it have a V in it? it? Sounds like it should have a V and a Z in it. I, like, I, it's some exotic like, name like Stella or something like Zin, that. Like Zinny some Vincent. Kind of, Vinny Vincent's Invasion. Um, Vinny Vincent Invasion. Which is another band I've been uh, kind of going I'll, back. I'll ask. Uh, I can't remember the name of my thing on my phone either. Uh, not Alexa, but that other one, the Apple one. Modern rock band, female name. Yeah, that's not going to find out anything. Nope, female fronted. Nope, that's not what I want. Nope, Women no, you're going to get a bunch of. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> What the Greta, Greta name? Van Fleet. Greta Van Fleet. That's it. Oh, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you know, I can see. I mean, no, it sounds just Stella like Lukather Stella Lukather. You know, Steve Lukather should get on that quick. <laughs> no, um, what was, oh, I was gonna say something. Zelda, Zelda, Zelda Van Lukather. Zelda Van Lukather. <laughs> well, anyways, have you heard those bands? Because I haven't really heard I, much of them. Yeah, I, like I, I think I, but more like in passing, and I wasn't a fan. Like, because remember kind of there, going there was for like more like the Zeppelin kind of shit, right? Yeah, and there, and there was like a first wave of that back in like early two thousands, and it was um. I, I mean, there's remember. nothing wrong with going Zeppelin. No. It means rock is coming back because I'm sick of rock not being around and just rapping hip hop. I'm fucking yeah. way sick of that. That's always been around. But, but um, uh, well, I know, but it's so prevalent right now. It's like rock disappeared. That's the thing. There was no mm-hmm. rock, but at least now it's coming back. But I'm not as much of a fan of like that bluesy, like Sabbathy kind of shit as I am what we were just talking about, yeah. like Toto, Foreigner, Kansas, Boston, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the stuff that's just like almost like more nuanced and involved and produced, you know, like the compositions, there's just more I thought think behind them. They're not one just of the jams. Things, yeah, one of the things about that stuff to me, too, that I notice is it's not about the singer as much as it is like with, say, like Zeppelin or like, you know, the doors. It's always like targeted on the singer and like how they who they are and what they do and shit in their personal lives they do. But like Toto and all those bands, it's just all these guys. They're just playing together and they're wearing whatever the fuck and they're just playing and they're just playing good music. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That sound... Let's totally total. I mean, they're all just session guys from the L.A. session scene, you know, so they were. Yeah, Dude, they, don't, they don't care about all the rock star stuff, you know, it's yeah, like Dan... that's, that's really weird because I like Boston and all those bands. It's just like you they're playing and they're just that's they just go to another instrument like really quickly and they're like the guy the singer will suddenly start playing piano while the other guy is playing his guitar or it's just wow oh, yeah like boston, it's a lot of yeah, talent yeah. tom schultz would get on the organ and everything uh interesting thing about boston is like um tom schultz like kind of the main guy behind boston uh has Who, who's like, that tom schultz from boston is that the He's the he's a guitar player, just that nerdy looking guitar player. The he's the tall, he's... skinny guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Just now, what about the other guitarist haircut? with the mustache? That's Barry Goudreau, right? Yeah. I and thought that went... was his band. Oh no, he's a, he's probably arguably a better guitar player than Tom Schultz, but Tom Schultz is the mastermind. Oh and really? He's, okay. he's an MIT, like a MIT nerd, like so he he went to school to, at MIT and he designed basically the amps that gave you that boston sound because you know you hear the guitars on boston yeah it's totally no and you instantly boston. know you instantly know what band it is too it's this crisp yeah, exactly. it's really crispy sort of uh clean sounding distortion it's really odd but yeah there's all these solid state these crazy like amps that he designed called the rockman um that's interesting that he did that yeah, and a lot of bands started using it, especially in the '80s. They'd have Rockman amps, and like some of the like that Def Leppard Hysteria album, that really polished album, mm-hmm. uh, has the Rockman amp all over it. You know, 
Yeah, that's Boston has that signature sound that you just love. It, it is such a feel good. All of that music, especially Boston, though, is so feel good, especially yeah. like Don't Look Back and yeah. More Than the Feeling and just like the vocals. They were way into hit your ride. And, and but, I noticed, too. Yeah. And I noticed, too, that like a lot of the bands, like the other musicians, when the singer is singing, they'll be in the background like do, 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 like the, all that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Throwback from like the 40s and 50s and shit in the 60s. Like they'd be doing backup vocals and yeah, it's just, yeah, there's just so much going on, but you take it for granted as just like a boneheaded verse chorus rock song with a solo that's been on the radio for like 40, 50 years. But you listen to it or you see it like I urge everyone, if you like rock, fucking go watch that excite videos and like go to the classic rock channel. And it's so fucking good. You'll just sit there for hours going, oh, my God, it's cool. It's like a throwback retro shit. But at the same time, oh, I cannot believe. Good how good it is like some of those bands put so much work into their each song i'm like that's insane oh yeah every song is like it's a, a crime to write that's them like... off it's just the band who did more than a feeling that's that's stupid they're so good oh yeah like i oh. want their fucking albums i i loaded my new phone up with like tons of classic rock now it's like all i've been listening to i haven't even listened what, what to do that. you think about um i think another band that's really good in that is night ranger Night Rangers underrated too. They were really fucking good and heavy. They had their heavy metal moments too. Yeah, in fact, they're they're mostly like heavy. Like you go back to those first three albums, man, and there's some really crunchy riffs going on. You know, it's too bad that they're only known for Sister Christian. I mean, that that song uh, is its own thing. Well, they, Sister Christian, but they also had Don't Tell Me You Love Me. That's a huge one. I know, but I mean, most people who know Sister Christian are only going to know that. Like, like I know Rock in America was a great song. Like, yeah. that was a fucking crazy song. And uh, when you closed your eyes. Yeah, that was just one of their newer about. ones at that time. It was, but yeah. But yeah, their deeper cuts are really good. Like, Sing Me Away and um, Penny and... Oh, that's another really good one. I mean, Same with have... Blue Oyster Cult. Blue Oyster Cult's a really good band, but they're only known for uh, fucking Don't Fear the Reaper, you know? And that's yeah, a good it, song, it, but I mean, come on. I, I hate that song. That's it's like such... Another Thing Coming. It's like they should make an album of all those songs that we're sick of. It would be Another Thing Coming, Run to the Hills, Don't Fear the Reaper, Rock yeah, and Roll All Night. <laughs> dro Drony kind of song. Crazy Train. You know? And that's another band is uh, Blue Oyster Cult. And that's another little avenue I've been getting into. And I think you'll be proud of me here is I've been into like 70s prog, like Alan Parsons. Man, that stuff's really good. What about Alan yes? Alan Parsons is so fucking good. Holy shit, it's good. Fuck, it's good. And then like, even get this, you're going to laugh at this. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Oh, dude, those. I'm fucking getting into Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I never thought so I'd this, say that. get this, dude. Like. My, I don't know if, do you even know my nickname that everybody calls me, like, in my family and, like, other friends? I'm known as Tarkus. Oh, really? Oh, is that why your email is Tarkus? Yeah, Tark. Yeah. I noticed that on your email. I'm like, I wonder what that is. It's, it's either the fucking Alan Parsons song or it's the reference to Buck Rogers, a very obscure reference. Oh, actually. No, it's, it's a reference of which, to I'll explain ELP's that. Tarkus. What's that? It's a reference to ELP's Tarkus. ELP, that's Alan Parsons, isn't it? No, that's Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer. E for oh, Emerson. Oh, ELP, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, I, th I, I was thinking ELO, who are another uh, great band, by the way. I'm not so, I'm not much of a fan of ELO. Aren't they the Knights in White Satin? No, that's Smoothie Blues. Oh, well, I don't know. Who no, is. ELO is Don't Bring Me Down. Shh, 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 oh. shh. But what about, um? so I think one of the best prog albums ever like it's easily in the top three is yes close to the edge have you listened to that have you listened to much i have a few yes? yes songs i've been checking out i i'm like i said a long time ago in an older show is like i have a little bit of a harder time with yes because of the vocals but but oh, they do have some good voice. music i can't take that away from them i would check out um if you ever listen to any yes just just throw on um close to the edge Actually, and that's just, the song you told me about because we said something about Over the Edge and like it, it was like a little thing there. It's like on a really old show that we did. But, and, but yeah. And pay, and pay attention to the bass. Like the bass is just gnarly, dude. It's that's like, funny that you say that because Yes has a really good bass player. I've always noticed that. But I was listening to Emerson, Lake and Palmer. The song from the beginning, which is a gentle song, but the bass on there is incredible. I'm like, whoa, listen to that shit. Oh, yeah. 
You don't pay oh, yeah, attention to that though. Greg you know, Lake, the radio. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Another good like '70s band that's like surprisingly heavy. If you go deep, is Jethro Tull. See, I don't know much about them. All I know is feeling like a dead duck, and the fact that they yeah, won the no. heavy metal award in the fucking Grammys at some point, which was ridiculous. But yeah, but I mean, they do go pretty hard, you know. And and yeah, that's you know that Aqualung is. I mean, it's a good song once again, but it's like okay, yeah, that one's been crammed down our throats, you know. You know, well, that, and then there's that other song, like whatever that oh, yeah. is with the flute. I'm like, what's this? Like do, do, fucking do, do. like uh, intermission music from Irish game shows? Like, what the fuck are we yeah. listening to here? Yeah, I mean, you have to go a little more deep cut with Jethro Tull to find yeah, like just yeah. really. But yeah, dude. And, and here's and there's... a funny thing about Tarkus. Um... I love that album cover, by the way. And I yeah, also that's love, the other uh, thing. I'm, I'm getting into surgery. the art. 70s art 70s science fiction art and 70s album cover art it's fucking amazing all of it i'm like uh, that's my next house well our, our, when our i move boy, out of this HR, house our hr geiger did a elp cover oh yeah hr geiger did like he did a bunch of different artwork designs for them i have the book you know it has all of his art in it and that's like a whole chapter on its own well, lots yeah. of cool shit the one they went with pales in comparison to some of the stuff he came up with but uh, it was probably tamer, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, it was. Probably it didn't was. Wanna... There was a lot of like, like seductive looking, like mouth and tongue motifs and shit like that. But they were like, they're, they're probably like, mechanic. you know, we don't want this album cover to be more awesome than our album. You know, we got to. Oh well, no, it was awesome. The, the artwork's yeah. awesome. It's in a book called Biomechanics. If you look it up, there's like black oh, yeah. metallic lips and stuff licking, like a metallic tongue licking the lips. It's cool as shit. I've 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 looked at just about every H.R. Geiger piece, stared at him for days, you know, just like he did. Uh, Debbie Harry, one of Debbie Harry's album covers, the singer from Blondie, like she did a solo mm -hmm. album. He did. She like no, face. he designed like an outfit for her, like yeah, yeah, he did. Alien looking. He did. A he lot also of did. That. He also did Steve Stevens. Yep, Steve Stevens. Um, Playboys. He also did Danzig. All of the Celtic Frost stuff, uh, uh, most of it anyway, not all of it, but actually no, uh, yeah, just the one, um, Two Mega Ethereum, but all of the, his other band, that other one that I don't really like, Triptychon. Oh, uh, did he? Which is funny, because, you know, uh, it's funny, because Tom Warrior posted on the Celtic Frost fan page mm -hmm. on Facebook, like a picture of the Cold Lake Celtic Frost that says, that has the Barbie logo on it. He oh, posted yeah. He posted See, that. I mean, he, enough time has passed that he can kind of like give it, you know, kind of look back at it with some levity and, oh, yeah, you know, sure. I, I, I still predict one of these days it's going to be like remastered or re-recorded and it's going to get proper. I, I'd be interested just to hear it just for, and, and like I said, I bought Vanity Nemesis. I bought a copy for me and for you, but it got fucking stolen off my doorstep by some fucking little twat that I hope gets fucking maggots in his asshole. But, uh, you know, whoever that is, fuck them. Um, anyway, I was going to tell you, um, Carcass, here's a funny story, and this is in the 70s, too, the late 70s, early 80s, the show Buck Rogers. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. B With the little B robot. B yep, a exactly. Yeah. Well, there's an episode towards the end of the first season of the show where Buck Rogers goes to the space station that's been taken over by all these rock promoters, which that uh -huh. right there is a kick-ass idea. It's called Music World. It's like this satellite floating in space. And there's like the most famous band in the galaxy known as Andromeda practices there. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning of that show, there's this guy who's uh, an undercover plan from Earth to figure out what, uh, why all these riots are breaking out at their concerts. And the guy's name is Tarkus. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets funny. shot off in the space at the beginning of the episode. So I thought that was kind of funny because it was also in an episode about rock and roll. So that was funny. But yeah. anyway, um, yeah, like Emerson Lake and Palmer, like some of their stuff was really good. Um, Alan Parsons was really good, too. Like some of their shit. So, again, they're only known for like a hit single, you know, but their real music is just like and their album covers match the music. It's so 70s sci-fi. It's fucking great. I'm like, I'm so lost in the 70s right now. It's insane. In, in, in a weird way, it kind of blows my mind that you're not as huge of a like early Rush fan. Um, I don't have, I haven't heard have you of early Rush. I mean, have I've you, heard. Have you checked really? out like Caress of Steel or Fly by Night or even like their very first self-titled that had a different drummer on it? Um, 
Well, I told you I've heard New World Man, the song, and that was really heavy, like a heavy rock song. And I've heard moving pictures all the way through, of course. But other than that, I don't know their stuff very well. That, that's all there. Yeah, that's like 80s. You know, moving pictures, I think, came out in 80, 1980. Um, yeah. New World Man is off of. Uh, that's off their first one, isn't it? Oh, that's off Signals. That's like 1984 almost. That's the album with like the big, it's the white cover with the black art and it has says Russian like pink, right? No, that, that, so the song, the hit off that album is Working Man, which is almost like a Black Sabbath number. Yeah, no, that's the song I'm talking about. Working, I guess that's what I am. Yeah, okay, because New World dun, Man is like. That one, right? Yeah, it's kind of Sabbath. That one? Yeah. Working Man, that's right, not New World Man. But I I would check out like some of the like Farewell to Kings like some of this their '70s stuff is kick ass and it's pretty heavy, you know. Um, and then speaking, of, oh go ahead. I was gonna say because like um like like uh well I'd actually just I'd check out the song Cygnus X One. Um, it's just so dark and groovy. Uh, you know, and yeah, I, I could, I, I actually would understand like the vocals might be a little, you know, hard to get past. But I think if you can kind of check out the music, dude, it's some of the coolest like heavy, like dark. I don't mind pop. Rush. Rush isn't like totally like one of those bands that I can't stand. They're okay. Um, they're actually featured on that Excite Videos channel too. It shows them in the studio playing Tom Sawyer. There's like a oh, yeah. couple other one like Distant Early Warning is on there. Spirit yeah. of Radio, I think, and yeah, I mean that's all their their eighty stuff, which is like awesome, you know, like it's it's the best, but um, it's polished and everything. But you go you go back to like twenty one twelve, oh my god, dude, that's a dark, like Temples of Syrinx. It's heavy as shit, dude. Like I, do they I would, do a lot of instrumental stuff? I wouldn't say a lot of instrumental stuff, but like they have like extended songs that have like some really involved like instrumental kind of breaks you know i mean they have they have a uh instrumental called um la via strangiato which is really cool you know you you might dig that you know because it, it goes Why was he like instrumental i'm like eh, it was all right yeah. but like the song Serious by Alan Parsons. I know they've used it on a billion things like infomercials and like the CBS sports or football or some shit. But that song by itself, is just it's like epic. It's like so sci fi. It's fucking great. Like yeah, you, you got um, me wanting to like kind of dig, dig into that stuff now. I'm like, oh, well, man, just, yeah. you look at the artwork of it and it's so good. It's just like that 70s sci fi artwork is just so good. It goes with that music so perfectly well. The, it's the like, problem with that, like with Alan Parsons is like, so that song Eye in the Sky, you know, that's the one that's been shoved out. Yeah, that's across. their big hit single and time. And it's, and it's such a droney, depressive song. I got the eye in the sky. It makes me, it's like depressing sound. It makes me feel lonely and and sad and i don't know why it's just it, maybe it reminds me of like getting lost at the supermarket or something like that and can't find my mom and that song would be playing over the speakers well maybe i don't know that's uh that, it's a very gentle song so that's why yeah. i mean that in the song time is flowing like a river that was a really yeah. super gentle song like my, that's been on in the car with me and my mom when we went grocery shopping in the 70s so yeah, uh, it's funny because if you listen to music in the 70s, I know everybody loves Pink Floyd, especially like their early hippie shit. I'm not so into yeah. that as I am, like, say, like Animals, that album, because it's got this progressive feel with the, one of those cool, dark covers. And Steely Dan, the Royal Scam is like a kind of a dark, proggy. Oh, like, yeah, I love that. Cover. And that's a cool album cover. It's like a dark album cover. It's like it's all these big corporate buildings with like animal, like evil animal heads, well, like, like an eel yeah, like in the back. Like it's like a fucking and... guy asleep on a bench underneath them. And what like all Katie that shit's so good. Katie there, Lied. A... That's a good one. Who is it? Katie Lied. The Steely Dan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a different album, though. I know. But that has probably my favorite Steely Dan song of all time. Can you guess? Black Friday? No, oh, Green Earrings. No, that's on the Royal Scam. Is it? Okay, it never is. mind then. Trust me. 
I kind of you're, you're actually more unquote. of an expert on the Dan than I am. Well, I also kind of like borrowed that album from KRCL when I worked there, and I kind of forgot to give it back. But yes, Screen Earrings is on the Royal Scan. Just keep it. Yeah, my favorite Dan album, or probably the Dan album I listened to the most, is, it was probably like everybody's, you know, for the most part, was Asia. Yeah, that's a good one. But I think the Royal Scam is my favorite. It's just, there's something about that time in the 70s. All those bands, Alan Parsons, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, it's just such good shit. And like, and I never got into King Crimson. I know they were like the mother load of all those bands, but I never really heard much of their stuff. I would, yeah, you know, and, and I... I think they're really interesting, but they don't they don't really grab me as much as like those other bands. And I think part of the reason is because they're almost too proggy. Like they're too um They're from the sixties though, aren't they? Because I remember them being kind of hippie ish or something. That's kind of what's in my head, but maybe I'm wrong. They they to me they don't have like like I hate to say it, but like my favorite prog stuff has a pop element to it, like a hook. Like like the Kansas stuff, right? You know, in the Boston, you know, you could almost argue that Boston is sort of proggy because they have the keyboards and, you know, they have that overture kind of kind of thing, you know, um, that, you know, that instrumental thing that goes into a long time. Yeah. You know, but but I, I need that hook, you know, like those really catchy vocals, you know, that, you know, you kind of almost want to sing along to it. And King Crimson is a little more like they're kind of a little more out there. Yeah, they seem it's they're more to me like Pink Floyd's first album, like uh, metal, like one of these days. And that's a cool album. I'm not taking anything away from that. But um, there's a little bit more of like the hippie shit on that Pink Floyd album, like uh, Fearless or I think or whatever. A San Tropez song. I'm like, nah, that stuff doesn't really that. I don't need that like silly shit, but like one of these days and like the Seamus, I think, is that the last song on that album? That stuff's kind of cool. I mean, but really Alan Parsons and stuff like that. And like some of that, like dark Pink Floyd, Steely Dan shit from the seventies, like really gets in there. It's just dirty and proggy, but something about Pink Floyd animals, the Steely Dan, like the Royal Scam and some of those other ones, like Alan Parsons, Blue Oyster Cult has a little bit of that edge too. Kind of. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, well, and it just goes to show, like, back then, you know, bands were able to, that's the sound of, like, bands with freedom, you know what I mean? Like, with musical freedom that are able to sort of follow, like, whatever whim they kind of have at the time. And the record labels would be kind of on board with it, more or less. I mean, record labels have always been, like, kind of shady and shit, but but they would let it they would let the bands experiment a lot more back then it seems like right yeah i i was saying uh, as far as like the heavy metal soundtrack for the movie heavy metal i think a lot of uh, a lot of what happened on there was it was some old classic bands but they put some newer stuff on there they were trying mm -hmm. to promote and it didn't quite work like that's why devo was on there and that other band that that you liked the, what, what were they called i don't remember rigs rigs what is it rigs yeah, 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 and then, and it just um, didn't happen. But so it's it was like a vehicle, like for some of these things to get out there. But I think I think the uh, if I'm not mistaken, the guitar player for Riggs ended up joining or even start. He either joined, no, he joined Thirty Eight Special, yeah. which is a one of those bands I almost see, I kind of put in the same category as like Boston. You know, I was just, gonna say 38 special, you know, they they came out in like the early 80s. They had like a big album that had like caught up in you, I think. Yeah. Like, Hold on loosely. Yeah, yeah, that one. And Don't then, let but, go. Know, if you look back on their older stuff, they were kind of in that vein too. They had a lot of like pretty good like rock and stuff, you know. And and who was the other one? It was uh who's who sings that song, Couldn't Get It Right? Couldn't get it right. Um, you know that song? Was that, was that Don Henley? No, it's a band. Uh, Climax Blues Band, I think. I just couldn't seem to oh, get yeah. it right. Get, couldn't get it right. Couldn't get it right. It's like a 70s song. 
dun, 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 in the night, I couldn't get it right. I, I vaguely remember that, but you I know I, what I'm talking about. It's, it's yeah, called Couldn't I, Get I, It Right, and I'm pretty sure it's Climax Blues Band. And they came back in like 1981 with this really morbidly like gentle soft rock song Casey Kasem played it all the time on America's Top 40 it was just called I Love You and it was this gentle love song it's easy and that's another thing too is like on that channel on Excite Videos the classic rock channel it shows some of that stuff too like it'll show Air Supply right. it shows the band America you can do magic and even that stuff's good I'm like Air Supply had some fucking heavy riffs actually they used to be the pussy yeah. band we all made fun of in the 80s but now it's like they're not that bad they're pretty good you well, I, I've, I've told you probably this a million times, but like uh, the drummer for my first band when I was in a band, Weird Herald, uh, he went on to play drums for Air Supply. Yeah, and we then, were talking about that. And their yeah. guitarist or bass player lives in Salt Lake too, huh? Yeah, or, Johnny Lightfoot. Yeah, I think Air Supply, I've made dinner for Air Supply before as well at the restaurant. I mentioned I made dinner for Blue Oyster Cult and like Cheap Trick or somebody one night, but... It was also air supply one night when they were here. <laughs> yeah, because um, uh, I think his name's Graham. He lives yeah. in Midway. Um, yeah, crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it, they play stuff like America. You know, they 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 did uh, riding around on a horse with no name and like Sister Golden Hair. All those old seventies, like early seventies, like folk yeah. rock songs, but. Yeah. They had You Can Do Magic, and that's not necessarily like a hard rock song. And you see the video, and they just look like, again, like your dad and his friends, you know, had a yeah. poker game, and they started playing music. You're like, what the fuck? All these short-haired <laughs> guys with button-down shirts and mustaches, and they're playing this easy rock. I'm like, wow. Oh, yeah. And even that stuff's good up to a point. You know, I love some ambrosia every once in a while, you know. And... <laughs> My sister used to date the keyboard, like a keyboard player for ambrosia. Oh, man. My older sister. Yeah, Are they um, from around here? I don't, you know, I don't know, I, you know, and obviously he was an original, wasn't an original member, you know, but. Because uh, um, even some of that stuff, you know, I have like my easy, like 70s soft rock station I put on at work sometimes because my, uh, yes, my boss there, like the general manager of the restaurant loves that shit. And like, so we were listening to like, just, you're the biggest part of me and like. All that, all that easy, like, 70s rock stuff is just so good, you know, like uh, Ambrosia and I can't remember, like uh, Seals and Crofts, Diamond Girl, all that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I think they call that, what do they call it, Yacht Rock? I'm not so Yeah, I guess that's that. what they call it. Like Michael McDonald, like, he did the song, uh, oh, I know you love him. He did the song for the movie... Running Scared, the 1986 one with Billy Crystal. Oh, yeah. Sweet Freedom. It's like, it's just this totally bland, soulless, like, evil, like, pop song from the 80s. It's just so fucking good. Michael McDonald is... I wonder if we talked about this, but... Uh, so, when when uh, David Lee Roth quit um, Van Halen, Michael McDonald was a name that was thrown out to replace him. Can How you would imagine that what, work, man? I don't know. Like it, it he can't do the splits like, in midair, and he can't hit those highs. Or can oh, he, he can hit those highs, but like I, I don't. He just doesn't have like the aggression. I don't think of like a Roth or even a Hagar. You know. No, he, but, I don't think he does. But how would he hit those highs? Like in Running with the Devil. There's no way. Well, he no one could do those like uh, weird, like sort of two. What do they call it? That almost like. It's a weird scream where there's like two for, two notes, two tones going at the same time coming out of your throat. That's An like octave? almost like, yeah. What? You mean like octaves or? No, you know, it's a, uh, um, I can't even think of the term. But yeah, those screams that Roth does, there's, a, you know, you can hear like two um, different frequencies coming out of, you know, it's weird. It's it's almost like uh, two two voices coming out of his throat. And I forgot what the technique is called, but um, but uh, Michael McDonald, you know the song "I'll Wait" off 1984. Yeah, I'll that's... wait until you love. He wrote that chorus. And when you when you know that, you could actually hear him singing on that song. I'll wait. 
till your love comes down. I'm coming straight. You give your love. Yeah, I can yeah. hear him singing. No way. You can stop <laughs> me now. So Michael as, McDonald was actually as also. Fine as you are. Oh, what? yeah. Fuck yeah. See? Right. He was actually the original singer of Steely Dan, too. Oh, yeah. And I think he wasn't the original Doobie Brothers vocalist, was he? I thought he was. I always thought was he? he was. I, I know I he was know. the original Steely Dan singer too, though, like way back then, like way before, like they even had, I think, even before, before the, in the years or or the countdown to ecstasy. I yeah, actually, I, I don't really care for those first like couple of Steely Dan albums because they were kind of. I, I'm not a fan of Jeff Skunk Baxter so much. I liked it when they started really getting like just getting all these session players, you know, and and it's just and becoming like kind of perfectionists you know and they just have these pristine just perfect played written songs the countdown to ecstasy just sounds a little kind of hokey still to me it doesn't really hold up yeah it's it's not their best album um i don't know uh royal scam doesn't really have any of their like jazzy hits on it i think green earrings is like the jazziest song on there everything else is really kind of like this weird dirty dark city kind of grunge oh, yeah. expose thing it's weird that that's what pink floyd animals is like to me too it's did you did you like uh their kind of their newer one like two against nature you know what that one was pretty good i like that yeah, one but that was one's really good i didn't like the one that came right after it everything must go yeah, that wasn't very good. That's the one where Walter Becker, I think, did vocals for the first time, but that wasn't a very great album. And I think he wrote most of it. There was a lot yeah, of I reggae so. stuff on it. And yeah, like it's, the, it's weird. The Two Against Walter Nature Becker. was good, but it was almost yeah. just pure jazz. There was like no rock whatsoever at that time. So. Oh, yeah, but Jack of Speeds, that's such a great song. Dun, 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 dun. Um, and that Walter, have you listened to like Walter Becker's like first solo album, Eleven Tracks of Whack. Which one? Oh no, I have not heard his solo album. I have a few of uh, Donald Fagan's records though. I, yeah, <laughs> the, oh, all Donald Fagan's are all awesome. Um, Karma. Very Korea. pop. Me. Yeah, but I love Nightfly. Like that's one of my favorite songs he's ever done. You know, like that whether... that great '70s Oregon like do 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 do. What's yeah. that song? Uh, Between the Black. raindrops. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. There's a song that says do 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 do. I I, I can, it's on the radio a lot. It's like an easy listening radio hit. Um, Is it a? Uh, it wasn't Nightfly. Oh, it's um. What a beautiful world this would be. Da, no, da, not da. that one. But that one's also oh. a really good cheesy one. But the other one is uh. God, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've heard it. It's not Nightfly. We're gonna have a wing ding. I can't remember the fucking song title though, but I actually bought that. And be spandex on jacket. Oh wait, no, <laughs> I'm I'm still thinking of what a beautiful world. Yeah, that's a good song too, though. It's it's funny because I was just thinking last night about some of this music and how I used to hear it all the time alongside like Shaw Day and stuff like that all the time when I worked at Ross Dress for Less and when I worked at Discover Card. But so you I haven't heard have... Swing Out Sister. I have never, not that I know of, I probably she's, heard it without knowing who it was. She's right in that Sade, um, Baja kind of, you know, smooth, like sort of jazz pop female stuff from that era. And that was, was Swing Out Sister, when were they biggest, like in the 90s? They had a, a hit, a couple of hits, like kind of in the, I think, late 80s, 90s, like Forever Blue um waiting game i mean just super kind of poppy but but i wonder if the girl from that um was in there i i mentioned this a, a long time ago again when we talked about that band but there was a show science fiction show called babylon 5 about a giant space station the size of a city and that was the name of the space station was babylon 5 uh-huh. Well, the doctor of this space station goes way down into the bowels of the station just to look around and meet the people there. And he go, he finds this nightclub where there's a girl, this black girl, singing jazz like that. 
I'm like, this is a show in the 90s about a show in the like 27th century, and they're listening to this 90s jazz. There's a guy playing <laughs> an alien playing a saxophone like that, and there's like humans and aliens playing the music, and he falls in love with the girl. Oh, Serena's so sister, she's not black. Oh, they're okay. like a, they're a British band, but they, you know, they kind of have that soulful. Also, for that matter, do you like um, Massive Attack at all? Uh, probably. I, I can't think of anything off the top They're the of my same head. kind of thing. They're like a smooth jazz, but like a little bit of trip hop in it, and they have multiple oh, albums out. Then I then I would totally like them because the I album, like that style of music. Okay, I'll put one of their records in the Dropbox. Okay. I think you're gonna like it. It's very not saxophone, but there's like this really swaggery, swanky, just sexy. There's there's a band popish thing to it, and it's, they're British too. There's a new band that's kind of in that vibe or that um, genre that I discovered like in the last couple of weeks. That is amazing. Like they're so good. Uh, it's a band called Night Tapes. That I want to say that sounds familiar, but what about them? They're just really, really good. But it's in that kind of like trip hop, or I don't know, do you want to call it trip hop or ch like very like synthy but jazzy and poppy, you know, with like female vocals, and it's just got that real vibe, you know, very vibey music where it's just like yeah, massive attack is like that. They have it's like uh... nighttime in the city, you know kind of but but like in a city in the future kind of vibe you know yeah that's exactly how i would describe massive attack they, they, you've heard their music in the matrix and blade movies okay um, but their music is like it's it's like that it's dark it's sexy it's got that kind of city like like modern edge to it yeah. like young beautiful uh, people you know in a nightclub that kind of yeah fire. yeah but there's but, a guy in a real sort master. of yeah yeah there's like a guy Blade in a real there it's really sexy just trip hop ish it's just really good music the i'll put their best album up there it's called mezzanine i'll put it up in the in the drop box for you and if you like that, like I know we've talked about this as well before, but there's a band called Antimatter from England that used to be members of Anathema, the doom death metal band, and they do the same oh, thing. Yeah. Really weird, swaggery, dark, sexy, like just rock kind of whatever kind of music, I guess. But yeah, uh, I'm a, sure I've mentioned this before, but kind of like another band that was like really that kind of did that 80s sort of thing was uh, that Night Flight Orchestra. I'm Night sure you've heard of them. <clears throat> I have heard that. Who? Well, it's, it's members of like kind of that sort of uh, Swedish melodic death metal scene. Uh, but you, do you know the Shadows band? Soil, Soil Work? Soil Work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you told me about that once, but I, I've never See, heard I think it. you'd really dig it. If you're, if you're kind of digging like the Toto stuff, is very much like kind of in that um toto night ranger like phil collins era genesis kind of thing or uh even like mid 80s yes you know like the owner of the lonely heart sort of uh yes sound yeah i think you dig i think you really dig night flight orchestra but it sounds like i'd love massive attack though so that's Something I'm definitely want to check out, because that I mean, it, that kind of music is one of those. Uh, it's that style that you can just always put on, and it just sort of gets it just sets your mood, you know. It's Massive kind of Attack cool. has a groove to it too. There's a really thick bass in a lot of their music, and there's like just has a groove, like this sexy fucking groove to it. Um, Blade 2, the movie Blade 2, there's a song in there they did, but it has like a rapper doing vocals over it. That, even that works really well with them. So, but yeah, sometimes vocals, it does. Yeah. yeah. Their vocals are usually just like this chill guy or this like really beautiful girl. And the, this is really good, like just totally just swanky. The kind of thing you'd expect to hear if you went to some total ultra edgy paris nightclub or new york nightclub where everybody in there is fucking beautiful and it's like you know like 
but but the music thousand dollar like rolex watches that kind of shit you know it's, that's kind of is the music like kind of sub because i like it when the, that style of music if it's like sort of subdued and moody you know what i mean and and chill i guess yeah it's totally Instead of like techno thing. like it's, it's I don't like that but there are parts though. where it's a little heavy you know it's it's cool it's really good shit it's not all of their music is like that. Some of it's a little less uh, involved, but like the the one album Mezzanine, it's like a bright white album with a big black scared beetle on the front. Right. Okay. Are they uh, now? Are they like um, Portishead? Yeah, exactly. They're a lot sort of like Portishead. Okay, actually. so that's kind of in that. Yeah, because they're they're another great, you know, sort of atmospheric, chill sort of. Yeah, I love that stuff. I in. I'm glad you like brought up Massive Attack because a lot of times, like, I want to listen to that stuff. I just don't know where to start, you know, and I don't know even what what term to search under. So, like that uh, Night Tapes band, I, if you like Portishead, you would love Night Tapes. It's like a modern version of that. So it's, and when I say modern, I don't mean a shitty version of it because I know modern these days kind of stuff, you know. It's so good though, like so atmospheric and and moody and 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 like soothing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it's like. There's also another band called FC Kahuna that's kind of like that. They didn't really get very far because I think the two guys who were doing it like OD'd and died. But <laughs> did you ever? Dude, there was another. There was one band that I really love. I still listen to the album like pretty frequently. They only put out one album. It's called Mono. Um, and I think I, th- I think they go by Mono UK. They just have the, the one band album. Mono? They have Mono. Mono, mono like Mono Nucleo Stereo, Lopes. like that. Yeah, M O N O. Yeah, I know who you mean. They they actually have been in Salt Lake. They played here a couple of times. Really, the, with the chick. Like um, I, life I, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, this guy now named Sean <laughs> runs a thing called Freezing that he does with like just people submitting like sci-fi and horror stories and whatever. But he's super into that fucking band, and they I, they've come here a few times. He always mm-hmm. tries to get me to go. He's uh, he's into another band called Cancer Slug. I think maybe we talked about. It. He was trying to coerce me into going to that. But Mono is yeah, Mono. That's the one with the girl singer. They're yeah. They're like one of those really weird art rock bands, kind of. Or yeah, well, they only they only released the Formica Blues album. I think is the only album they have, and then everything else is like remixes. But man, it's like a perfect album. Like there's not a a bad song on there, and it's just sultry and but it has that sort of almost hip hop sort of like just a slight electronic music edge to it. Yeah, I love that. Album. Yeah, Still yeah, that's kind of it. how uh, that's sort of how Massive Attack is. There's barely like the nuance of like a modern edginess to it with like electronics, barely here and there, but not really. And it's yeah, but it's, it's usually like the drum beats. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. That's but it's a real drummer too. That's the thing, or at least as far as I know, because I've seen a video where it has a drummer, but that doesn't really mean it's a real drummer, but. Oh uh, yeah, Massive Attack was great. Um, I think they've kind of just broken up and focused on like film music, but I heard they're back together. But I don't know. But that one album, you know how every band has that one album you got to hear. Theirs is called Mezzanine. It's the one with the big beetle on the front. Um, okay. But uh, you should, I should. I'll put Antimatter up there in your your little Dropbox, and I'll put okay. Massive Attack up there. But you'll probably find it on your own anyway. But. But yeah, those are some good bands. Um, yeah, <laughs> like that dark, chill, like trip hop stuff. As yeah. long as it's heavy and got a dark it's, edge, it's I, like I, dark that's, that's but cool. not like dark but not depressing. It's hard to kind of. So you know what I mean? Where it's like, you know, those those nights where you're like you're feeling great, but you're just sort of kind of walking through the city, you know. Yeah, it's maybe yeah, it's, maybe it's, it's a little cold, but. You know, there's the term life. city is perfect for massive attack. That just there's just something about like walking around uh, in the buildings and shit and just looking up at the beautiful people, that kind of thing, quote unquote. But that's that's the yeah. vibe you get. And, and like I said, it's almost like slightly like near distant, you know, near future sort of city. You know, not quite Blade Runner, but getting there, sort of. Very modern, I guess you could say. Yeah. 
which would brings us to the primitivism of <laughs> are you following this Norwegian controversy Black, with fucking slayer right now or not slayer but carrie king no or deicide was... I, I we talked a little bit about the DSI thing with like the AI album cover. No, we didn't talk <clears throat> about that, did we? We talked yeah. about Pestilence getting a lot of shit, and they eventually relented and changed their album cover. But apparently, Deicide has AI album cover, but nobody dares say anything to Glenn Benton because yeah, they're scared fuck shitless of it. No, people uh, have said something. Not, I mean, I think he even made like a a remark on it. The the thing with the DSI is I listened to the song, you know, I so, uh, checked out the single, and it's, I mean, it's DSI. Like, I don't know. I'll let the album slide. The album cover slide because I don't think they compromise their sound one bit, you know, so. Well, there's another alternate cover. It's just it's the same thing, though. It's AI, but it's a picture of Glenn, you know, with, like, horns, and it's him. And at, at what point do you... Uh, you pay an artist to do that because really the stuff he's done i've done shit like that on my phone like laying in bed i mean are you really paying someone to do that i guess yeah. at that point it's not really art is it or is it you know that that's the big controversy right now is what's art i mean it's still a cool picture that someone made but it's it was easily done and i guess as we've discussed previously ai is yeah. to my knowledge like just goes and pulls shit off the the internet and splices it together but i don't know if that's really how it works yeah, I don't know either, really. I mean, but it's it's funny because the uh, the bigger controversy is because he said, "What's with all these death metal bands these days? They look like pussy. They look like Weezer, and now everybody's giving them shit." <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So what? I say shit like that every day, and he's right. <laughs> who well, is he I talking mean, about? Do you know who he was referring I, I, to? I think he's kind of talking about, um, and they're usually like pretty good bands, like, but that kind of new. New wave of old school like death metal. So you know your um, two mold, blood incantation. Um, you know they're like bands that have like uh, they look like college students almost. You know with like the ironic mustaches, like handlebar mustache. You know what I mean? Well, and, I saw a uh, picture of two mold. I'm like they weren't really wearing band shirts, but they were wearing like star trek and like horror movie shirts i'm like well still i mean they have long hair and they're wearing black shirts what's the difference you know I yeah mean, they're they, you know and i think that's what he's talking about and, and i i don't really have a problem with any of that you know unless I mean, he means like other bands like uh people who aren't really death metal that are playing he, it, you know? well i i don't i don't imagine he is because he probably doesn't even pay attention to like you know like metalcore bands or anything like that so i think he's probably talking about some of these bands that like i said kind of look more like uh like art students in college you know but whatever it's i mean they're making cool shit uh like one of the it's like a newer death metal band but i think they're amazing and so is it, to go go to metal for a second um it's the last kind of metal album I really just dug into, and it's uh, the Skeletal Remains, their latest. They're still around, huh? Are they? Uh, how long have they been around? That's been I, around uh, since the early '90s, haven't they? Yeah, but that's still new to me. Um, or maybe I'm thinking of a different band, but I don't know. Uh, no, you, you might be right. Let's see when their first album came Skeletal out. Remains, I'm pretty sure, is like a pretty old band. Yeah, I mean, they, they, I think they've been around, but they just put out a new album. That's, once again, they, like, they have that, they found that sweet spot in death metal for me, right? Which is kind of on the technical side, but also kind of on the old school side and, and very groovy. You know, they just have these grooves that you just mm, just want to nod your head to. And good, you know, good, just traditional death metal vocals that don't really sound screamy or, you know, just, yeah, it's just a solid, nothing, nothing groundbreaking or anything, but just everything I love about death metal played extremely well. So, yeah, their latest is... Uh, Fragments of the Ageless. 
So apparently, uh, yeah, I haven't heard any new death metal bands. Uh, I just know there's just the controversy with Pestilence and AI and DSI, and now he said something about Weezer. I haven't heard really any new bands uh, <clears throat> or any new releases from old bands, but... Like I said, I've been immersed in classic rock. I've been like absolutely just not caring about anything else. So it's been like, oh, no, that's dude. I think I think it's kind of like we might be having a little bit of like uh, what do they call it? parallel thinking because I've sort of been in that mode too, man. I'm just like, Ugh. you know, I just need that real. I mean, I've always liked classic rock, and I always listen to it. Like, at work, I'll put it on in the kitchen. It's something that's versatile. Everybody can kind of get into. I don't subject people to, like, decapitate it at work until, like, late at night when most people are gone. But, you know, usually if you put on Pandora, all you ever hear is more than a feeling, you know, like all the popular shit. But when you really watch the video, I'm just like, wow. I'm going to get all their albums and just listen to it all. And especially that that weird kind of not so popular stuff like alan parsons and elp all those bands that's right tarkas wasn't emerson lake and palmer that was an instrumental you said um it, it was an, wasn't it i don't think it was an instrumental well the song might be an instrumental but the the album is the one that has that weird armadillo tank looking beast Yeah, the song's an instrumental, if I remember. Um, yeah. And there's another funny thing, too, is uh, a couple of shows ago, you made a quip about, I said something about uh, Billie Eilish. <laughs> not, not, you know, she's like the poster child for, like, modern music, how that's just derivative, like, pop music or not, something I went off on. Yeah. And I think you said something like, yeah, she'll be redundant. And like, I think she's already redundant. And like, she'll have to come out later and say that she's gay or post news or something. Well, guess what? Apparently, <laughs> you haven't heard anything from her in a while. And now she's come out as like gay or bi or non linear or non binary or non denominational yeah. or whatever the fuck it is. And yeah. Yeah. so I think that just happened. I just thought that was funny because uh, it happened. It's, you predicted it's kind that of, one. You know, it's like I like said, <laughs> I mean, not saying it to be just you know edgy and unwoke but i mean it's just predictable you know happened uh, with well, miley cyrus i didn't think that would happen and then sure enough she came out and said that she was non-binary or something to that effect and like and you just called it and i was like wow <laughs> like mark <Yeah>. called it <laughs> it was you could see it coming a mile away i'm i'm no Probably. I mean, I was trying, you were giving her the benefit of the doubt. I was the one that was kind of shitting on her a little bit, but then I started to relent and think, all right, maybe I'm being kind of a dick, but now I guess I was right. So, you know, I was going to, so you don't have any new death metal for me. Uh, just, just like the skeletal remains is the one that I was like, um, yeah, really digging. And then, you know, yeah, they have been around, you know, for maybe a decade, I guess, but, um, what about that Carrie King thing? Have you heard that all the way through? Or is that even out yet? I don't think it's out yet. So that's already garnering a lot of controversy there, too. Like, what, he's just talking a lot of shit. Did Slayer, like, they were going to get back together and do some big shows. Did that fall through, I guess, is what I heard. Uh, shit. I, you know, I don't know. I, I thought uh, that uh, they were going to do that, and then Tom said absolutely not or something and called it off, and now he's just going on vacation with his wife or something. And I'm like, I haven't really been following it, you know? Like, I, I don't know. It pops up when you <laughs> scroll through Facebook. You'll see shit. I don't really click on stuff like that, so I don't really mm -hmm. read it, because if you do that, then you'll get <laughs> nothing but that horse shit all the time. Yeah. In your news feed, and I guess that's better than politics, but. Yeah. I don't know. Let me go to Blabbermouth. I haven't been there for a while. See if there's anything new. I don't that think it's interesting. Uh, KK Downing's Priest and Acceptor Tour. I will totally go see that show. In fact, I had the tour dates up. That's when you were calling me and you're, you couldn't you couldn't hear each other. Are they, are they hitting Utah? Uh, that's what I was looking for. It doesn't look like it because they go to... New Mexico, Arizona, and then California, and then they're in Istanbul, Turkey, and shit. Like, I guess not. Hmm. Fuckers. And you heard that about sucks. you heard about Steve, Steve Albini dying. Who who is he? 
But wasn't he on Minor Threat? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, was he? Oh, hold on. Oh, what the fuck? That was never big. So, KK and Except they're going to fucking Denver on September 3rd, but they're not coming here. Fuck Denver. So, I might have to go, because Denver's only like three hours away from me. Denver can blow me. They should come to Salt Lake instead, and the assholes in Denver can come here. I hate that when bands go to Denver and don't come here. Hmm. Fuck Denver. All right, well, they're not coming here, I guess, so fuck them. I'm not driving. They can't come to me. I ain't going to them. Fuck you. Sorry. All right, Carrie King. If I make 95% of Slayer fans happy with my solo project, I think I had a good day. So there it is in the uh, nutshell. Carrie's still doing Slayer, whether he says it or not. I'm thinking it's going to be 94.5%, so pff, he should just... What I heard that. from that, that single he put out wasn't bad. I mean, it yeah, was... It's, it's, it sounded like Slayer. Yeah, it did, like you know? older Slayer, like like actually before 90. It was like Hello or uh, South of Heaven Slayer is what it sounded like to me. Mm-hmm. This is good news, not for you. Well, you know, I mean, it's not bad news for you, but it's not news to you. But Mr. Big uh, is going <laughs> to release its 10th studio album, 10, on Friday, July 12th. Good. I think they oh, it's good yeah. they put out one more album. Uh, what else? I like Mr. Big. Um, I don't see how Judas Priest can come to where I live, like right down the street from where I live, and play twice within two years, and then KK down and can't fucking come to this state at all. I would totally love to see Accept play. That would be awesome. I don't know. Oh, Ooh, Coheed and Cambria just releases a single. I'm going to have to check that out, actually, immediately once I get off the phone. Because they're one of, like, my last, like, last band that just, like, really kind of blew me away. Like, became, like, a favorite, like, a classic band to me. It's Coheed and Cambria. Um, Terry King, Blackville Brides, I don't even, Pretty Reckless, Atreyu. What the hell, man? Nothing's going on. Nothing. Cold Chamber? What is this like? It's like new metal. It's, uh, Bear Tooth. I don't, can't remember those guys were good. Falling in Reverse. They're coming out with a new album. I'm just kidding. Who? I fall, falling in Reverse. Monster Magnet. Steve Perry. Vended. Oh, God. Kelly Clarkson. Um, I saw someone uh, quoting, I forget who it was, that they, someone that was a morbid angel maybe, saying that they thought uh, Blessed Are the Sick was a lot of padding on that album. A lot of uh, padding? That pisses you off. I don't know. What, why would that make me mad? Because you love that album. I do. But there's a lot of what on it? Padding? Yeah, like just a lot of filler and fluff. Nah. He doesn't mean it. He's just having a bad day. Well, yeah. Yeah, there's bullshit yeah. on Blabber. There always is bullshit on Blabber. Why do we even look at this fucking website? Yeah, no. yeah because whatever. Well, I guess here it says, Carrie King on Slayer. Reunion will not translate into recording and touring. Unless it does. Yeah, it probably will. But, you know, I don't know. I, I still think uh, Tom Araya is, is not going to, you know, he's done. And, you know, and I, I, I see no problem with him doing, like, these one-off shows and stuff like that. But I'm I'm 100% positive Tom Araya is done touring and recording. Yeah, there's not much going on. I like I liked the... A deep dive though into the 70s stuff yeah that's where it's at man kansas yeah. motherfucker boston yeah even like some of the kansas albums that didn't have the original singer on it steve walsh like the drastic majors album is another favorite of mine of kansas 
that almost reminds me of a Boston album. And it's it's funny too, like uh, how like bands like Toto they have they have so much piano in their music, but mm-hmm. I look back on it and I watch the video for Hold the Line. And like man, there's some heavy guitar chops in there too, and like just it's just. It's really weird. It's like it's heaviness, but with like melody and stuff in the 70s. It's, it had the capacity to satisfy hard rock fans, but it was somehow poppy enough, I guess, or accessible enough to get people to like it that weren't like rockers, you know. Was... And just the way some of those guys look, too, you had to like love it, like the giant mustaches and shit. And the way oh, they yeah. Dress. Yeah. Like the singer awkward. from Toto. The guy singing in Toto was like, he had this shirt and it was like you could tell he had a little bit of a belly because it was like this tight it was all tight like forming around his gut mm-hmm. brown corduroys brown vest tan shirt button down mustache hair wavy long in the back short in the front oh and yeah it's like well and you, you look at that first boston album man like brad delp has a huge afro is that the drummer no that's the singer the drummer, though, in Boston had a massive afro, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, crazy. Um, For real. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to... Uh, I, I have some of those albums. So I'm going to have to, like, get deeper into, like, Kansas and all of that. I thought it was pretty good stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah baby. Early, man. It's almost been two hours. You're going to turn into a pumpkin. I know. Well, it's been a little over an hour and a half, but still. Yeah, we can edit it down. I don't know. There was like a lot of hot material in this one. I don't know. I don't know, man. Do I feel like I, I feel like hot? I. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah. I but I, I think Patty Smythe. Right. You know, speaking of, you know, to call back. Patty Smythe is, she was so cute back then. You know, uh, an interesting story about Blondie, Debbie Harry from Blondie, is when she was visiting, I don't know where she was, I, I guess actually it was Ted Bundy was visiting New York, and he she was standing on the street waiting for a taxi, mm-hmm. and he pulled up and offered her a ride, and she had an inner voice in her head telling her, don't go with this guy. Mm. And uh, she didn't, and that was, like, I think right when his spree started, too, like, right around that time. So if she had taken a ride with him, we might never have had Blondie. Yeah, I mean, I was never a huge Blondie fan, but she's, I mean, they're they're good. I like Blondie. Blondie's one of those bands, too, where if you go back and listen, they got some hard rock and some heavy shit. And like, Clem Burke, their drummer, was really a great drummer, like a massive, awesome drummer. Mm-hmm. But anyway... That's it. Are we done? Yeah, I think so. Is the Sandman sprinkling your little eyes full of sand? Yes. You know, I got to go listen to some records. I think that's what I'm going to do. I know. I'm going to play. I still have some of these classic rock records my brother used to have, so I'm going to have to dig them out. What do you think about that? I think uh, you're a lucky man. What a lucky man. And he was. (laughs) <laughs> yeah hell yeah all, all right. right good word to end all right buddy